So look at somebody and say, blessings and favor are in my house. Coming up on today's program. Well, I speak over this house only for about 10 people. I speak over this house that no more lack. I speak in this house no more, no more uh, 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 down at the bottom. I speak in this house that we are blessed coming in and blessed coming out. I speak in this house that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I speak in this house we are lenders and not borrowers. I speak in this house in the name of Jesus that God is getting ready to pour blessings on those who will receive who you are. Grace of God and what, what, what happens when a person understands what God does in their life and how free they really are. Here, here's, here's, here's one of the, one of the challenges that I am trying to to relay week after week is that some of us are free or all of us are free but some of us don't know it we hear it but we really don't believe it the message that God has given to this ministry is that you stand before him right now holy blameless and without a single thought. Do you know how powerful that is to be able to pray to God knowing that he is saying to you that you are okay just the way you are? Now watch this. When, when this is none of what I'm preaching, but since I'm speaking let me this when you go back to the original garden incident of Adam and Eve y'all remember that story how many of y'all remember that story how many of you remember that how many of y'all don't know the story of Adam and Eve all right when Adam sinned the Bible said that he hid himself Jesus uh, God came walking through the garden y'all remember and when he walked through the garden he said Adam where art thou and Adam said, I was afraid, I was naked, and I hid myself. Do you know why people stay away from church and stay away from God? It's because they're hiding their sins. People don't like to come to church where the light is exposed on what they're doing. So they stay away from church because they now have to deal with their sins. When they come to church, they think that the preacher and the pastor is going to get on them about what they're doing. So they stay away from church because if they can stay away from church, they don't have to confront their sins. But what if you went and told them that Jesus already paid for them and that when you walk in here, you don't have to worry about being confronted because it's already been paid for. Amen. Amen. That's great news. But I think a portion of it is that some of us do not believe that we have been set free. And some of the things that we are going through and some of the things that we are, are happening in our lives, sometimes we think it's because of what we've done in our past that's causing us not to be blessed now. How many of y'all the devil, don't, don't, don't lie to me. How many of y'all the devil kind of whispered that to you every once in a while that, 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 that the reason you ain't getting what you got is because of what you really done? Amen. He, he tells me that and I preach this every week. And I got to remind myself that Jesus paid it all. It is finished. It is done. This is great news. And the more, and when I, and I just asked that question, 80% of you all raised your hand. And what I'm trying to tell you is you got to constantly remind yourself that you have been forgiven and you are been, you've been set free under the blood of Jesus. You are forgiven. God is not mad with you. God is not upset with you. And favor is over your life in every area that you can walk. You got to start. Well, look at your neighbor and say, start walking in favor. 
Yeah, yeah. And the enemy keeps us thinking that we don't have favor over our lives. And the more you think it, the less you act upon it. And when you don't act upon it, you then, you then invite into your life things that are not good, things that are not. You, when things don't happen, you almost say, well, I know why. Instead of saying when things don't happen, what's happening, Lord? That this don't supposed to be for me. I supposed to be blessed. I supposed to be the head and not the tail. I supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. And I'm looking for every day when I wake up, I'm looking for favor to fall into my lap. I'm looking for favor to be in my house. I'm looking for favor. All of, why? Because I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed. Look at your neighbor and say, you've been redeemed. Do you know what I mean? With me? The Bible says you are bought with the price. You are, uh, listen, I, this is not, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Go, go with me, go with me uh, um, um, to 1 Peter 2nd uh, and 9. 1 Peter 2nd and 9. It's the last verse. It has nothing to do with this. I'm just using the scripture because it works with what I'm talking about. Uh, you got to walk in favor. Look at your neighbor and say, walk in favor. And you got to let people know that this house and, and, and the reason they need to come here is because they've been chosen by God to do great things. God, God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to walk in. He wants you. There is no reason why any of us should live defeated in any area of our lives because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Do you remember that? The Bible says that we are more than a conqueror. How? Through Christ Jesus. Because Christ did it all for us. And all we have to do is come to our Heavenly Father and ask Him for what we want. Yeah, yeah. Believe it though. See, the Bible says you have to believe that what you've asked for, you will receive. But the enemy keeps blocking you. Here's the, here's the thing. The enemy is a accuser of the brothering. So he accuses you that you didn't think right. You didn't treat that person right. You didn't act right. And that's the reason why you're not getting, that's the reason things that are happening to you that shouldn't be happening to you. So you work harder to try to live better. And then when you work harder to live better, you get frustrated because you're not perfect. And you miss the mark. And so when you miss the mark and things don't happen, the enemy comes back and say, you didn't do hard enough. So instead of fasting three days, you fast for five days. You pray five minutes, that one good enough. You pray 10 minutes. Nothing's wrong with praying. Nothing wrong with fasting. But that is not what get the blessings of God in your life. God blesses you because he loves you based upon what he's done for you already. Y'all ain't clapping. I just, uh, I thought a few people in here would receive what, am I, am I making sense? And you got to constantly talk to yourself. Listen what, listen what the Bible says. But you are a what? You are a chosen what? Read it out loud. You are a what? You are a chosen generation. This generation in 2014 has been chosen by God. You have been chosen. You, 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 you didn't just so happen to walk into Christianity or walk into being saved. You are chosen by God. Look at your neighbor and say, God cho has chosen me. He's chosen me. He's chosen me. Do you know what it means to be chosen by God? That you are a friend of God, that you, that you are connected to God. KJ, you are chosen. That you are chosen. He's going to make things turn out all right for you because he chose you. You are going to win because he chose you. You can't lose because he chose you. You are a chosen generation. And not only a chosen generation, but you are a, you are a royal priesthood. You're not royal. You're not chosen, first of all, because of anything you've done. You're chosen by, based on what he's done for you. Okay, so I'm a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. Do you know what it means to be royal? Come on, how, how many of y'all know about the England folks in England and the queen? <coughs> and uh, what's the boy's name? <coughs> William. Prince William and Prince Harry. Prince William and Prince Harry 
join the army and they won't even let them fight. Because royalty don't fight. Somebody fight for them. Y'all miss what I just told you. And the reason we're not fighting, because somebody is fighting on our behalf. There's angels that are fighting on our behalf. The, the angels are fighting and, and, and beating the enemy on our behalf. We don't have to fight. All we have to do is stand still and see the salvation of God. You know why I don't fight? Because I'm chosen. I don't have to fight you. I don't have to fight my enemies. I don't have to fight people on my job. I don't have to fight people in my home. All I got to do is say, Father, they're messing with your chosen one. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I believe I'm chosen. Do you believe you're chosen, Rhonda? Look at your neighbor and ask him. Say, do you believe you're chosen? Wait, no, no. Wait for them to answer. Do you believe you're chosen? Yeah, you got to know you're chosen. You got to know you are chosen. And you got to know it. You have to know. And then you got to understand that not only are you chosen, you don't take no junk. You're royalty. There's a certain standard that if you deal with me, you got to deal with this standard because I'm, I'm a royalty. Come on, somebody. I don't let people speak to me any kind of way because I'm royalty. You can't cuss me out. Ho, ho, do you know who I am? I'm royalty. Lower your voice when you're talking to me. I used to tell my bosses when they used to get off on, go off, I said, hey, 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 hold up. I respect you and, and you're going to respect me. You're going to bring that tone down because you don't, you know who I am. I'm royalty. If you don't understand your position, you don't walk in your position, your position will walk over you. Come on, somebody. Come on. You got to bring your level of who you are up. And, and we got to stop thinking. I, I'm, every time I walk in here on a Thursday, on a Sunday, and it's empty, I'm offended. Because I don't expect it to be because of who I am. You shouldn't expect it to be because of who you are. This church is the greatest church in Orlando. And we got to start acting as if we're the greatest church in Orlando. And the only way we're going to act like we're the greatest church in Orlando, when you believe you're the greatest members in Orlando, when you believe you're chosen and you're royalty. And some stuff you shouldn't, some stuff we shouldn't even accept and have full church, we should stop accepting because it doesn't represent who we are. Uh, Y'all ain't saying, I wish I had some people that had some fire in them tonight. I, I, I'm, I'm preaching. Y'all just sitting there quiet. I, maybe I, where, I just need to talk to about 10 people that feel like they're royalty. Where are, well, let me just look at you. Where, where are my royalty folks? Like, uh, let me look at just the royalty people that know who you are. Now, if you sit down and you don't feel like you're royalty, that's fine. But I need to look at some royalty folks in the eye tonight. And that's who I need to talk to some people who know who they are in Christ Jesus. Do you know? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I feel like I'm talking to my friends tonight. Let me tell you something. Do you know you can walk a certain way and people will think that is somebody? I don't know who they are, but that's somebody. Because of the way you are. You walk around that like you don't know where you're going. People be walking up to you. You know why people get robbed? They don't walk with authority. They're so timid when they walk. People that walk with authority, thugs don't bother them because they say, wait a minute, he got he, he's something about him. We're going to find somebody that's weak. We're going to find somebody that, you know, you got to walk with authority. I was, I was, uh, I, I was walking, me and co-pastor was walking. Uh, well, she was, not that she didn't walk with authority. She had the babies with her. She was walking somewhere and the, and the security stopped her. 
and say, hey, um, I need to see some ID or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and she left. And so I'm walking. I didn't see her. I'm walking and I see the security. I just walked past them like this. I kept on walking. I went looking for her. She came back. She says, I couldn't get back there. The security stopped me. They didn't stop you? I said, no. I said, I've been all back there looking for you, thinking you were back there. She said, we couldn't get back there. I said, come on. Let's go back there. And I took her, and we just walked past security. Amen. You know why? I walked with authority. I walked like I was blessed and highly. I walked like I was supposed to be there. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I didn't come like I was a guest. I was supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be blessed. I don't walk up on no blessing asking for it. I walk up on the blessing, demand that it happens for me because it's supposed to happen because of who I am. I am royalty. I am chosen by God. And you need to act like you're chosen. You need to walk like you're chosen. You need to look like you're chosen. You need to look blessed and people will expect and they will, they will, they will honor you. You're royalty. And, and, church, and, and, and this church need to act like we're royalty. Stop acting like we're second class. We need to act like we're the best. When people walk in here, we need to act like it's already. Act like it. They say, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We're holy. We holy because of what? See, everybody got problems with that one right there. We were saying we're good, we're chosen. We are good with royalty. Holy. Yeah. Pastor, I don't know, I'm not. Yes, you are. You are holy because Christ is holy. And he put his holiness on you. Come on, come on. He says... <laughs> He says, you're chosen, and when you're chosen, he says, I put royalty in you. He says, I'm going to make you a holy nation. He says, you're going to be my own special people. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm special. And you got to act like you're special, people of God. I went to the store today. I went to the store today, and I was talking to a man about a discount. He said to me, he said, sir, he said, I'm going to talk to my boss. He says, but I, we, we have never given discounts on this, what I was asking for. You know what the first thing I said to him? You don't know who I am. I said, you don't know who I am. I said, I tell you what you do. He said, here's my cell number. This is the manager. He said, you call me back on Monday. I called him. I didn't call him on Monday because Monday's not here yet, but I sent him a text. I said, tell your boss this is what I want. Because I believe that if I speak it, if I make my request known, then God's going to shift the atmosphere in my behalf. Why? Because I'm special. I'm chosen. There's something special about me. There's something special about me. It is. I mean, when it, it's something special. It's something special about me. I, I ain't bragging. It's a fact. I've been chosen by God. And so have you. And you got to start walking this way. You got to start. Don't be going into the places timid. Don't be going to a job interview as if you hope they hire you. Go into the job interview and say, if you don't hire me, you're going to make a mistake. Right. Who am I talking to in here? Yeah, that's who you are. You're, you're special. Look at your name and say, you're special. He said, but you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim. Wait a minute. Come on, that you may what? Y'all read it for me. That you may what? That you may proclaim. He <laughs> He said, your responsibility is to open up your mouth and proclaim that do you know who my daddy is that called me out of darkness into a marvelous light. He says, when you are special and know who you are and know what your calling is, you are to proclaim it. 
the reason this house is not full, y'all don't know who you are. Let me say that again. The reason the house is not full is we do not know who we are in Christ Jesus. We are coming to church week after week hoping to get a blessing instead of understanding that we are already blessed and that we can call some things into the atmosphere that has not been happening in your life and you don't have to wait for a blessing to come. You can speak a blessing into the atmosphere and watch it happen in your life. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? That no more, no more, no more. I speak over this house only for about 10 people. I speak over this house that no more lack. I speak in this house no more, no more uh, 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 down at the bottom. I speak in this house that we are blessed coming in and blessed coming out. I speak in this house that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I speak in this house we are lenders and not borrowers. I speak in this house in the name of Jesus that God is getting ready to pour blessings on those who will receive who you are. You start walking in it. Look at your neighbor and say, walk in it. Just look, just look at somebody. Just look at somebody and say, you sitting by somebody. You tell them you sitting by some good stuff. Look at them. Tell somebody you sitting by some good stuff. Come on, look at them in the eye. Look at them. Tell, if they ain't looking in the eye, punch them or shake them or something. And say, look at you. You're looking, sitting next to some good stuff. Hey, Amen. I don't want to be broke down no more. I don't want to be begging no more. I'm tired of being at the back of the line. I'm, I'm supposed to be ahead. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm tired of struggling. I'm looking for God to do a turnaround. And I'm speaking in my life now. Right now, right now, right now. Say, but you are chosen. You are chosen. He said, jo chosen generation. He said, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of doubt. You got to proclaim it. You got to open up your mouth and proclaim. Watch this. Watch this. God needs people. <laughs> Here's a better way to say it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God blesses people who know how to brag on him. <laughs> yeah, y'all didn't catch that. Do you know why I'm blessed so much? I brag so much. I brag on God all the time. I brag on his favor for me all the time. He only blesses people that's going to proclaim stuff. If you want to know why you're not getting nothing, it's because your mouth is closed so much. You, you got to learn how to walk on your job tomorrow and proclaim his goodness before you see it. So when they see him do it, they'll know it was God that did it. So they will give him the glory. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to learn how to brag on him. You, you got to learn how to say... <coughs> My God is awesome. They know you're the lowest person on the totem pole. And you got to start walking in your office and saying, my God is awesome. Say, so you know what? Uh, he's blessing me beyond measure. He, and people going to get, and let me tell you something. Here's the secret. People going to get tired of you talking about how wonderful he is. Because people get jealous when they think you're doing well and they're doing bad and y'all both making the same pay. Now, y'all wish you catch that. I wish you catch that. Uh, you got to be, look at your neighbor and say, you got to be willing to make some enemies when you talk about the goodness of God. Yeah, you, I, I, I'm going back to my wife. My wife had a, a, a friend that she grew up with she grew up with as a child. I mean, they were childhood friends. Uh, uh, about 10 years ago, her friend told her, says, listen, I'm really, her friends start drifting away from her. And she kept wondering, well, what's wrong with my friend? We've been, we've been friends since we was in school. And she, friend told her, said, you know what my problem is with you? Every time I call you, 
You always talking about how wonderful stuff is. I'm sick of that. It can't be that wonderful in your life. See, that's the way, see, if you haven't had anybody tell you that yet, you haven't talked about the goodness of God enough. I, I wanted, I, I wanted, no, 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 you didn't hear what I said. If you haven't had anybody tell you, I'm sick of you talking about this, you haven't talked about, you haven't proclaimed his goodness. You haven't bragged about your royalty status. You haven't bragged about your chosen status. You haven't bag, bragged about your special status. Am I talking to somebody in here? Y'all too quiet. I wonder, is there anybody in here that know how to brag on Jesus and know how to brag on what he's done for you? Know how to brag that he's still a healer. Know how to brag that he's still a deliverer. Know how to brag that he still make ways out of no way. Know how to brag that he's still opening up doors that you didn't have the opportunity to open up. He is yet God. When everybody else on your job is talking about that God is dead, God is this, you still proclaiming the goodness of God to the point they say here he come again here they come again you ain't made nobody mad until you proclaim the praises of him that called you out of darkness look at your neighbor and say have you made anybody mad lately you gotta learn how to make people mad about the goodness of God you ought to make people mad that here they come again talking about their church if they if you could sit next to the people week after week and they don't know the church you ain't you 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 haven't been the chosen generation because when you chosen you brag about it you brag about it so I mean I have so many I have so many wonderful, incredible stories about what God has done for me. I am one of those people that could not tell it all. I sit down and I talk to people and they just sit there in amazement of what God has done. God has done so many incredible, wonderful things and he keeps doing it and I keep bragging on him. I keep telling people how awesome he is, how incredible he is, how he favors me more than he favors you. He loves me more than he loves you. Now, I'm not saying that's what I say. You better tell me. No, 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 no. You got that wrong. He loves me more than he loves you. You better say you are his favorite. Yeah, you better talk. See, you got to talk that way. You got to walk that way. And, you, and, and, and we, in other words, what I'm trying to tell us is the reason that our church is not booming is because we're not bragging we're not bragging because we don't believe who we are you got to wake up people other than that you're going to live this way the rest of your life and you all should be listening to me as your pastor who've been talking this talk ever since y'all known me that i'm blessed and highly favored and every since i've said it when I came to Orlando, Pastor Freddie, I knew no one, zero people. Look what God has done. You know why he's done it? Because I bragged that he's going to do it before he did it. Didn't know how he was going to do it. Didn't know which way he was going to do it. But I know he ain't going to leave me hanging by myself. Because I've already won. I'm already victorious. I'm already great in his sight. I'm chosen. I'm a royal priesthood. He's not going to leave me hanging. He's going to make it happen for me. He's going to bless me in the morning. He's going to bless me in the evening. And whether you're here or you're gone, he's going to bless this house. Why? Because I'm bragging on him. He's going to do it. This is the best house. This side of heaven because God told me it was the best house and I'm bragging on it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And when you start bragging on Jesus and when you start taking your rightful place in the kingdom, the Bible says, the Bible says that G, now watch this, the Bible said that Jesus raised us up, that God raised us up with Christ. Don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this. The Bible says he raised us up with Christ. We didn't raise ourselves up. 
He raised us up when he raised Christ up. And so therefore you are seated or sitting in heavenly places now. You have access. You have access. Do you all hear what I'm telling you? You have access. The reason that you have not been accessing it is because you don't believe your position. You got to understand that you're in the right position. And God not only put you in the right position, but he put you in the church. Where it, I constantly, Pastor Freddie constantly tell you, co-pastor, the other ministers and elders, that you stand before him holy, blameless, and without a single thought. Why won't you ask him for what you want and start walking in it? Because you are seated in that place. You're seated there. You ain't, you ain't going to get no higher than you are right now. You ain't going to get no higher than you are right now. You ain't going to get no holier. Ain't no, ain't, ain't, ain't don't sound good, but it, it's, it, you know, it ain't no good, but y'all got what I'm saying. You will not be any holier than you are right now. You have everything that you need to move to the next level. And the only thing God is waiting on for you to do is to recognize who you are. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and then the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He, he said he comes in when you lift up your head, when you recognize who you are, when you recognize the position that he's given you. You got to recognize who you are. You got to call those things that be not as though they were and start walking in it. You got to walk in it. If you're sick, don't don't agree with sickness. Agree with I'm healed. If you're broke, don't agree with brokenness. We agree with I am more than a conqueror. I, God shall supply all of my needs. I am rich in Christ Jesus. And God will start dropping ideas. God will start dropping stuff into your spirit. And before you know it, you'll start doing stuff and, and, and doing businesses because you have opened yourself up to being royalty, to being chosen, to being special. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm chosen. I'm royalty. I'm holy. And I'm special. You got to believe that. Pe people of God, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You are chosen. You are royalty. You are holy. And you are special. And the enemy comes to tell you that you're not. And if he can get you to believe that you're not, then you will live like a peasant when you are living in the palace. The reason that we don't fill this house is we keep having peasant mentality because we don't believe who we are in Christ Jesus. And God is saying, how long are you all going to maintain living beneath your privilege when you are royalty? You are holy. You are special. You can do all things through Christ that strengthened you. You know what he's waiting on? You to come into agreement that of who you are. And he'll start dropping ideas. He'll start dropping visions. And before you know it, he'll connect you with the right people. Uh, can, can, I can I tell you? Can I tell you? I, me and Pastor Hardy was talking about this, and I'm through. You can play music. I quit. <laughs> Must have been what Lord wanted me to talk about, because that's nothing on my. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the guy that we have the mortgage for for this building, the guy that's financing this building came to see us today 
Every time I say we need to call him, he shows up at our door. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't hear what I'm telling you. When I speak, I need to talk to him. He lives in California, by the way. Every time, you know what he walked in here and said? Stop calling me and I stop coming. He gets here before he gets the message that I called him. Because God allows me to see what I speak manifest. You know why he does it? Because I'm chosen. I'm royalty. I'm holy. And my God, I'm special. <laughs> Whoo, I'm special. I could not, we could not have found, we could not have put together a more understanding finance person. If I could have picked, if I could have picked one and drew him and it would be him. Because when you understand who you are, God brings that level of blessings your way. <clears throat> when you don't feel that you're nothing, then you attract nothingness to you. When you feel you're beneath, you attract beneathness to you. But when you feel that I'm special, <clears throat> this ain't some things I don't tolerate in my life because it's not royalty. Certain places, I, and this is not brag, certain places I eat because I want to eat, but in certain places I wouldn't take my wife out to dinner, not because I'm bragging that I'm too good or whatever, it's just because of the level of royalty she is. Do you, do you understand? When you meet a guy, ladies, some places you, you don't even get out of the car until he come and open up the door. Because of who you are. You make him rise to the level of who you are. And if he can't handle that, then he's not the right person for you. Am I making sense? Some, some, when, you, when you realize who you are in Christ, then you proclaim his greatness. When you proclaim his greatness, he gives you more because he likes to be bragged on. <laughs> last, last point. I told that five minutes ago, but I'm still ahead of time. I want you to notice something. Pay attention. I'm through. Still play softly. I'm through. <laughs> Pay attention. This is good. Whenever God spoke, he always said this in the Old Testament. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said it because those three people always bragged on his goodness. So when he wanted to reference himself, he went back to people who had an encounter with him and bragged on him. If you want to see God work in your life, start bragging on him. Don't, listen. Don't brag on him after he does it, because that's not faith. Brag about what you're going to see him do. And when he does it, everybody is going to say, <laughs> you really are blessed. You really are blessed. When, when the pastors came in on, on Monday, last Monday, see those pastors been knowing me when I was the president of the record label. They knew me when I was a musician. 
They knew me back then, but they kept hearing me tell them that I was blessed and highly favored. All of them kept walking around saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you really are. Because they heard me brag about him. And if we brag on him, we will fill this house. Because people will come in here saying, I want to see if he did it for you, he can do it for me. Is there anybody in here understand? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Let me read this. Read together. But you are a chosen. Who is that? Who is that? Where are my chosen folks? Where are my chosen folks? Who are, where's my royal priesthood? Where are you? Holy nation. Now throw your hands up if you're really special. Now, if you all of the things that I said, chosen, royalty, holy, and special, tomorrow you're going to walk out of here and do what? Brag about him. Proclaim the praises of him who called you out of being in poverty, out of being poor, who called you out of being in sin, who called you out of being nothing, brought you out of darkness into a marvelous light.